Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back. And if you are just tuning in with me for the very first time, it's so nice to meet you. And I'm really glad you're here with me today. I am your host, Heather Carey, nutritionist, chef, mom, and a woman who has been around the block with food. I want to open up about real food in relation to health, weight, and our bodies so you can make peace with what you eat. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Real Food Stories. Today, I had the pleasure of speaking with Amy Lawrence, who is the author of The Power of Food Prep and a Meal Planning Guru. Now, if you know me, you know that meal planning is my jam. So it was a pleasure to speak with Amy about food and everything that goes about healthy eating. Amy has a really amazing website. She's all about meal prepping and meal planning. You definitely will want to take a listen to this conversation, especially if you feel like you're too busy or you don't have time or you're empty nesting now and the kids don't live in the house. This is a really good conversation to get you re-motivated about cooking and healthy eating. So take a listen to my story with Amy Lawrence. Hi, Amy. Well, today I have Amy Lawrence with me, and Amy helps listeners save time, money, stress, and calories with her food prep method. She is the CEO of Gourmet Done Skinny and has combined her talents and love of cooking to produce healthy gourmet recipes for her company and food blog, GourmetDoneSkinny.com. Amy has been in the food and tea industry officially since 2003 but jokes that it's been her, quote, calling since the day she was born. She has taught cooking classes, written more than 15 books, has produced numerous instructional cooking videos, and continues to keep up with her weekly recipe blog and Food Prep for Foodies membership. Amy is dedicated to showing others you don't have to suffer eating boring, bland meals in order to lose weight and be your best self. Her latest book, a number one international bestseller called The Power of Food Prep, shows busy foodies how, with minimal planning and prep, can enjoy these healthy gourmet home-cooked meals all week long with her gourmet done skinny meal method. Well, Amy, I'm so excited to talk to you and to another foodie because I love doing nothing more than talking about food. And you're totally speaking my language because food prep is definitely my jam. And honestly, it's really what I believe to be a total game changing skill when it comes to eating healthy and being healthy and losing weight. It has absolutely certainly helped me personally and all my clients who adopt a meal planning habit. So why don't we just jump in? I'm like so curious to just talk to you about your story, what got you to focus your whole business on around meal planning and what's happening today? All right. Well, thank you for having me. It's just wonderful to be here. So I do feel like I have a food story. That's for sure. <laughs> so um, just a little bit about, about me in a nutshell. Um, I originally was a special ed teacher and at some point I decided to um, open a tea room because I love cooking. I've always loved cooking. And I did that for a long time and then moved to Washington, opened a tea shop, was doing great. Everything was going well. I'd written all these cookbooks. Um, they were all with fat, sugar, um, butter, you know, not, not healthy cookbooks at all, all tea room recipes basically. And, um, and I had my tea shop in Washington and in 2014, everything was going great, but I had an accident doing Pilates of all things and I tore my vertebral artery and they couldn't figure it out what it was for a little bit, a couple of days. And I ended up having a stroke and I was like 45 at the time. And so they weren't looking for that, obviously. And anyway, so that kind of woke me up to life and I ended up selling my, my tea shop and I gained a bunch of weight because I was just really happy to be alive. I mean, I just, I don't know. I, I went to India and I, um, went to the tea fields and I did all the things I wanted to do. And I just ate because I was happy. You know, I was just happy to be alive. 
And when I got home from India and I saw those pictures from India and I'm like, oh my God, I look horrible. You know, what happened? And and so anyway, I decided I needed to do something about it. Um, so I joined um, Weight Watchers and it was great. I lost a bunch of weight on Weight Watchers, but um, I really didn't really care for their um, their recipes. It just, they just seemed bland and boring and it just wasn't me. And I thought, well, you know, I know how to cook. I've create recipes for the tea room. Why couldn't I create my own healthy recipes? So that's kind of how my blog got started, the Gourmet Den Skinny. And then at the same time, I had also been listening to a weight loss coach. I just loved her um, her method. Um, and she taught me how to be a natural eater. And I just it just was so much more in tune with what I do and how I feel about food. And I just was so tired of the, um, you know, the points and you just had to save it up for a special occasion. It was like, all I did was think about food. And I mean, I'm a food blogger, so I should think about food, but not in that way. It was just, I don't know. And I just didn't like it. So this whole natural eating just really appealed to me. So that's how I ended up in that um, arena. And she asked me, this is kind of how my whole thing kind of took off. She asked me to be um, a guest speaker in her weight loss group as um, to talk about food prep. And I didn't really even think about it. I've been doing food prep since all my life. And um, I had a, um, when I had the tea room restaurant, we, everything was homemade. So we obviously had to learn how to do um, food prep, you know, in big scale, big scale, we would make like 50 quiche on a day and freeze them. And so I knew about food prep. So I thought I can do that for her little talk. And so I did it and her members just went crazy. And I just didn't think my methods were that, you know, exciting, but I guess they were and special. And so that inspired me to write the power of food prep book, which um, just came out last year. And then at, from that, I, um, while I was working on the book at the same time, I decided to um, create a food prep for foodies membership. So I don't think you're, you're alone in your story. I think most women that I see in my practice have been on Weight Watchers. I, I think, I don't know if there's anyone who hasn't been on Weight Watchers, <laughs> at least tried it, and then finds out that uh, it's not right. You know, like the food's not great. I, mean, I lost weight. I mean, I can't, I, I lost 40 pounds on it, but it's just not sustainable for life for me. I mean, yeah. You know. And counting points is not really sustainable no. for life. So I, with my clients, always want to teach people how to eat for the rest of your life, not for the right. time that you're just losing weight. and. Um, I like this term now, you know, that you or learn to be a natural eater. Mm-hmm. You know, Basically, because... you eat when you're hungry. Um, mm-hmm. You don't eat unless you're hungry. And that was part of my problem. I was kind of an overeater. And so I ate, you know, oh, it's noon. It's 12 o'clock. It's time to eat, you know, or we're all having dinner. It doesn't matter if you're hungry or not. You just eat. And that's or you go to a social event and you just eat. I mean, I didn't eat because I was hungry and I didn't realize that until, you know, until I started um, diving into that. And so, yeah. And then you don't overeat, you eat until you're just full. You know, if I just follow those two rules, man, I mean, it, it really makes a big difference. And then yeah. you try to eat percent healthy, you know, and, you know, but you don't deny yourself anything. If I want to have a piece of pizza, I do, you know, I just food prep and save, I use my vacuum sealer and I save the rest of that pizza for another time when I want it. There's tricks to reheating and things like that. So it still tastes great, but you're not overdoing it all the time, you know? So, yeah. So I think there's a lot of those behaviors and habits that we need to learn, you know, just being intuitive with your eating, feeling your fullness, knowing when you're physically hungry, right? not eating so much for emotional reasons, right? right. And just, it, just because you see it and it looks good, just eating it. So there's all those, those kind of behaviors and habits. But I think that the most important skill I think to learn is how to cook and how to prep your food and meal plan. I mean, I, I come from a a food background as well. I mean, I, I went to cooking school and everything, and I also have my master's degree in nutrition, but the cooking part I think is most important. It's just one of those foundational skills that you really have to have if you want to eat healthy, lose weight and lose weight for good, you know, and, and be at your healthiest. So Plus meal planning, better. you know, that's the thing. It tastes way better when you, when you cook your own things, everything, it tastes better. You know what you're eating, you know, what's in your food. You're totally in control of it. You can figure out the portions, mm-hmm. you can adjust things. You can add in more vegetables if you, you know, all of it. I mean, it's right. versus going to a restaurant or getting takeout and, and all of that. So 
it sounds like you were always in the meal planning business, you know, with your tea I business. didn't realize it, but I mean, in a sense I was, but it got me into portioning, you know, I mean, one of my little tricks right now is if you make yourself a, say a batch of chocolate chip cookies, I flash freeze them and then I package them up into six in a little bag. And then whenever we want a little treat, we put it in the toaster oven and we just bake six at a time. So you don't eat the whole batch, but you still have fresh, you know, fresh cookies if you wanted fresh cookies. So, mm-hmm. you know. So there's little tricks and tips for for doing that, you know, and having food on hand. That's yeah, and and those all those little tips and tricks I'm sure are part of your gourmet done skinny mm-hmm. meal method and stuff. So why don't we right. talk about that? Mine mine is very different than what most people think. Um, most people will think of the five black boxes that you have the same thing in a row and you stick it in your fridge. You make it one day. And then you stick in your fridge and then you eat. There's a lot of people that think that there's a lot of people that think it's the big cook day where you spend eight hours in the kitchen and you make all this food and to have for later. And I mean, that can be one of the methods, but one of my methods I use is called the multiply it method. And what I do is I just, you know, anytime I cook something, I might, I'll double it or triple it and then um, freeze it for another time. And so, you know, if you think about it, you know, say, say you're making, I don't know, spaghetti sauce is just something easy and quick. And, you know, you can make that if you think about making it three times, say you're going to make it three times. Think of all the, you know, you first, you got to shop for all the ingredients, then all the dishes, all the cook, cooking and all the prep work, and then cleaning it, everything up. When, if you just double or triple the recipe at the time that you're making it, it adds a little bit more time, but not really that much more time. And, you know, and then being able to pull it out, of course, you know, reheating, there's lots of tricks and tips for reheating and stuff. You can't just automatically stick it in the microwave and think it's going to be great. It's not, Um, you know, for some things it does, but for other things not. So there's little tricks and tips for that. But, but for me, you know, it's like when, like tonight, I have really no idea what we're having for dinner. It's fine. I'm going to go to my freezer at like five o'clock. My son usually comes home around five 30 and I'll figure out what we're going to have. And I mean, it's because I, I cook about three days a week typically, and then I freeze um, everything else. And so like tonight, I mean, who knows, there might be meatballs. It might be um, my um, healthy um, meatloaf, um, could be bolognese. I mean, it could be whatever. And then you just put it together with, you know, some great sides. I have a new um, recipe that I did with uh, air fried cauliflower, which is really great. Um, unfortunately, I ate it all yesterday because I was so excited about it. <laughs> so but, you know, just having those little things, like I, I make things like that. I'll make roasted vegetables in the in the fridge um, and keep them in the fridge for five days. And then that's what I'll snack on during the day. Um, or I'll use it as a side dish. I mean, it doesn't have to be like a lot of people think the meal planning has to be like, okay, Monday I'm cooking this, Tuesday I'm cooking this, Wednesday I'm cooking this. And it doesn't have to be that way. It can be as simple as going to your freezer and pulling out some, the parts, you know, maybe you pull out some grilled chicken Maybe you pull out some uh, guacamole that you made and you put it all together in a little wrap. It just doesn't have to be so scripted like a lot of people think. So that's how my method's a little bit different. So I see a lot of people who there's lots of excuses. I'm too busy. I'm, you know, I'm, I don't have time. I, I don't like to cook. I I think they have, there's a lot of fear around cooking too and like doing it right. But they say that they don't like to cook. So I think you and I, like, you know, you're telling me like, oh, I just have the frozen meatballs in the freezer and and I have the guacamole and I've, you know, I'm like, yeah, I get it. Like I get it. But some some people people don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. Some people just don't feel like they do have the time to cook or they just don't feel comfortable cooking because they don't really know how to cook. So what do you say to people like that? You know, like, for example, I have a, I have a client who literally, I mean, I mean, I have a, a lot, you know, they, they work full time, uh-huh. you know, they are commuting, they work full time. They, I mean, they honestly really don't have that much time, you know, right. Monday through Friday right. to get food prep done. So what right. what do you say for people who just don't like to cook or who just well, feel too busy? You know, it's, it's so funny because I started my membership last year and I just thought it was called food prep for foodies. I thought it'd be people like you that would want to, you know, join, but it's so funny. My members are like between 50 years old and like 80 years old. And a lot of, I have a lot of 70 year olds and they used to cook, but they never really liked it. But now they love it because they're only doing it three days a week. 
And I, you know, I have videos, so I show them exactly how to do things, but it's just, it's kind of a mindset. I mean, well, it is a mindset it is, and it is a habit. I mean, and they're getting in the habit of where they cook three days a week. And my mom, this is why I learned to cook because my mom hates to cook. I mean, she, now she likes to cook, but she's like my big example because she's hated to cook all her life. And now she's having fun. She's like, Oh, I got all my cooking done yesterday and I'm done for the week. And it's just, it's really interesting and and exciting to see people that who really have never cooked before or didn't enjoy it, how they like it. And I think it's just because you take that pressure off of, I have to do this every single night. And then they see the benefit of going to their freezer and like, oh, I don't have to cook tonight. I'm just going to pull this out. And I've got all these choices. And I mean, it takes a while, obviously, unless you do the big cook day a lot, it takes a while to build up your, you know, to build up what you have in your freezer. But um once you get in the habit of cooking like this, I mean, it makes it easy. I mean, it really does. Leftover rice. I mean, people don't even realize you can freeze rice. My mom was buying all these, you know, those little rice packets that you can boil. And I'm like, I'm like, mom, no, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can, you have, you make some rice for the evening and you package it up. The vacuum seal bags makes it really great because it keeps all the um, freezer burn out. Um, And I know people have their thing with plastic and all that, but you have to think about too. I have my thing with food waste. I hate wasting food and those vacuum seal bags, they will last. I mean, literally, I mean, the health department hopefully won't come get me, but I mean, literally they'll last two years in your freezer. If you've sucked all the air out, it, it keeps freezer burn out. If you've done, you know, a proper job of sealing it. And I mean, think of all the food and the money you can save uh, and the plastic you can save from having it all in your freezer. You know, it just it, it just makes sense. So that's a great point. I know I, I absolutely despise food waste. I, I just just oh, I it's, it's my my pet peeve in life. I mean, I'm a big composter. I have a big garden and everything and I compost. But but that's a really great tip just to. Um, yeah, sometimes we have to sacrifice. People are concerned about plastic. You have to just weigh the balance it out right weigh the weigh the pros and cons of things and so good tip to use those vacuum sealed bags because it protects it i mean and you know i mean you've got you've got people that don't like that but then they order from hello fresh and all the packaging that comes with all that i mean you've got that so it's kind of like you have to pick your poison you know basically but if you if you go to all this work i mean it, to me it's not that much work but if you if you create a recipe and you use fresh herbs you use fresh vegetables all that and you freeze it it's going to taste pretty good it may not taste exactly like you made it but pretty close and look how long you can keep it. I mean, you know, it's just, it's really amazing when you get down to it, really. So I love the, like, your three-day-a-week rule mm-hmm. or whatever your guideline, because I think that psychologically could be for people who don't like to cook or who right. said to love to cook, they can feel like, all right, great, three days and I'm done. Like, I can check that right. off the list. Like, I've, did, right. I've done my three days. it doesn't have days. to be three big days. I mean, it could be 30 minutes. It could be an easy recipe. And the thing with my method, it works with, you know, pretty much any recipe that you can freeze. And if you don't know how, you know, email me and I'll show you how to break it down to the parts that you can. It's not, you know, I don't have, if you're on a specific diet or whatever, that's fine. You can use your own recipes, but, you know, really it can be super simple stuff and you can make it within, you know, 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be a big, big to do, but people like make it a big to do sometimes, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think also, you know, you said your mom doesn't like to cook and- I don't know about you, but a lot of my clients, you know, they, they've they spent their lives cooking for everyone else, for others, right. for their kids, for their husbands or their partners, and their kids move out of the house. And they're like, I'm done. I'm done. Like, I've had it. You know, with- That's who likes my program because they make their recipe every once in a while. It makes safe for four people. Then they've already got more stuff in the freezer, you know, and so... It- my mom, you know, I mean, all my older ladies, they love it. They just pull out what they want and they don't have to cook every, every time. Yeah. So it sounds it. like you have a good method because a lot of people think like, well, now I'm only one or maybe two people in my house. I'm an empty nester and I'm following a recipe that's called for four to six portions. And what am I going to do with all that extra food? Well, you're going to repurpose it. <laughs> right, you're exactly, going right? exactly. to put it in the freezer and like use yeah. it again. Yeah. So I mean, freezing is is definitely a meal planning 
skill and secret. I mean, just to like double everything that you have and just put the rest in the freezer. Soups freeze beautifully. Oh yeah. They hot pestos. I mean, sauces. I tell that to my- And like even caramelized onions. I mean, you can, I mean, as a cook, of course I would rather have fresh caramelized onions, but sometimes I'm not in the mood to make that, or I want to use my homemade beef broth. You know, I'll just pull all these little parts together. So yeah, it works. It works very well. So what if you just really physically do not like you you at least feel like you don't have the time i mean if if you're if you're telling people to you know take three days a week but what if i only have one day a week you know it's like on a saturday then find things that work for you so like um if you only have one day a week and say you don't have that much time um if you have a grill you could grill up a bunch of chicken and then portion it into one cup packages it sounds very weird but when you're ready for a quick salad, you make up your salad, you grab your chicken, you throw it on there. If you need a quick little pasta, you throw your chicken out. If you've got more people that come for dinner that you weren't planning, you pull out more packets of chicken. I mean, it's very, I don't let anything go to waste. Um, and like, if you do make say a casserole of some sort, if you freeze it, or if you let it sit in the fridge overnight, cut it into individual pieces and freeze those individual peaches pieces. And then you can pull those out whenever you want a quick lunch or, you know, you'll have two people for dinner. You pull out two pieces. Somebody else decided to come, you pull out another one, but find recipes that you don't have to cook all day though. But like, um, grilling chicken, really, I can do my, I can do that. One of those big Costco, um, things of chicken It's like seven pounds. I can do it in literally two hours. I can cook, grill the chicken have it all chopped up and packed up. Now I don't do it that way. What I usually do is I brine it the night before I cook it the next day. And then the third day, then I chop it all up and, and put it in the little packages. Cause you've got a few days you can do it before you freeze it. You don't have to do it all in one day. Um, you can, but you don't have to. So I think it's a matter of finding recipes that work. And you know what, we're always going to have excuses why we can't do it. I mean, if, you know, going to the store and grabbing something for dinner or going and getting, getting takeout or whatever, that takes time too. And so, you know, if you, it's just, it's a mindset, you know, you have to get in the right mindset for things. So. Yeah. I tell that to people too, that it takes, by the time you've called the pizza place, ordered the pizza, waited for it and, and waited to get it and then paid for it. You right. could have made probably two meals, right, <laughs> simple exactly. meals you know, for the same amount of money. And, but, and and it's very expensive anyway. And like, like I have a frozen um, or I have a pizza dough that I freeze. And so if I know I'm going to have pizza, I'll pull it out the night before and stick it in the fridge, the crust, and then, and then we can have pizza. I mean, less than 30 minutes, we can have pizza ready to go. So it's just a matter of changing your mindset. I think really that's the thing. Everybody thinks it's too hard. It's not going to work. It's too expensive. You don't have any time, but really, I mean, you really do. You just, it's a matter of making time. If you've got time to go to the store, you know, and grab whatever you need quick for dinner or go out to eat, you've got time really. It's just, yeah. Um, and if you realize that eating at home, cooking at home is a thousand times healthier for you oh, than for sure. any takeout that you get, then that is a really good motivator. That's a really yeah. good why, you know, behind you're cooking because I, I agree. There's plenty of times when I've, it's been nighttime. And I'm like, I am not in the mood to cook right. right now or I'm tired, but it's, it's so well worth it because right. I have a bigger go to your freezer, pull out a few things and 10 minutes later, that's, that's worth it. That's quicker than DoorDash and all that other stuff. Yes. Sure. And then even better, if you have a freezer full of, right. of food, then you can just quickly right, grab, grab, reheat and and be done with it. And that's, yeah. So that's fantastic. In your membership, tell me a little bit more about the membership. I mean, what, what do you, so it's a monthly membership. It's a monthly membership. Yes. And basically, um, you know, you come in and it's kind of work at your own um, pace pretty much. Um, The first part is the first module is kind of all about the equipment. You don't need much, but I do recommend a few things. So I show you how to use everything. And then like the second module, um, I will um, show you, you know, like how to freeze things, how to flash freeze. A lot of people don't even know what that means. Um, Basically, flash freezing is putting something on a cookie sheet and don't cover it and just stick it in the fridge. And then when it's nice and hard, then you pack it away in your little, you know, vacuum sealed bags. I show you tips and tricks for doing that. And then the other modules are more like how to cook um, certain meals. I have a section called Meals That Multiply. And so like one is like um, a Kahlua uh, pork that you make in the Instapot. It has like four ingredients, 
doesn't take very long at all. Um, the great thing about that is too, you can easily, after it's cooked, you can easily trim off all that fat. And I trim off a little bit before you cook it too. So you don't, you know, so it doesn't have to be so fatty. Um, but then you can freeze that into little portions. And then like, you can make Thai, I have a recipe for Thai pork pizza. I have um, Thai um, pork wraps. You can put it over a salad and use my fresh hoisin um, sauce for, as a dressing with some fresh veggies. You could do a bowl. I mean, there's just different things you can make from that one recipe. Um, and so, so I have little tips and tips and tricks for that. And I do a weekly email and I give you ideas of what to make and, and tell you the new videos that are out and things like that. So, um, okay. So that's so, in a nutshell. Yeah. So are your recipes available to everybody? So you have a, so, a, a database have of recipes both. that so, you share? Yeah, I have both. The healthy, the really the healthy meal recipe is on the Gourmet and Skinny website. And those are free. That's just my blog. And those are free to anybody. And then when you're in the membership, I also have member only recipes. And some of them are healthy and some of them are not. It just kind of depends. Um, because I'm kind of a, ever since I started the more natural eating, I'm more of proportion, like eating proportions. Don't like, I'll have a little, I, my little motto is to, I'd rather have a little bite of heaven than a whole lot of yuck. And so, um, so, you know, so like I might make a great bolognese sauce It may have some fat in there and that kind of stuff, but I'm not, I'm not about eating a ton of it. I'm just in eating, you know, we just, we portion everything into little things. So it's up to you how big you want to do your portion. But um, so some of the member recipes are, are healthy. Some of them are not the ones on the gourmet and skinny website though. Those are all healthy as well. That sounds great. Can you say that again? What, what you just said, the, a little bit of. Oh, a little. <laughs> so I'd rather eat a little slice of heaven than a whole lot of yuck. <laughs> I love that. That is, you yeah. know, like the Weight Watchers is like, you could eat all this, you know, stuff for zero points or like fat free, sugar free. I don't know. I'd rather just have a little tiny piece of cheesecake and, and just call it Enjoy a day. Enjoy every bite. Right. Exactly. Right. Just have like a couple, like, right. Two bites. Right. Is... And I only need two bites. I mean, I do a lot of little tartlets because you don't need a whole piece of pie or cheesecake or whatever. A little tartlet is totally fine. It's a little exactly. Dessert. Nothing good happens after the third bite of a, right, exactly. of a dessert, and right? <laughs> a little, you know, they're all small. Um, so they're like, you know, two bite cookies maybe. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'd rather go for quality versus quantity as far as that goes. So. Yeah. One thing that it's, it doesn't relate exactly to this, but I wanted, I wanted to mention it because when I was doing research for my book and I don't remember the exact number at the moment, I, I want to say 1500, but calories, but when you eat out, you eat out so many more calories than when you cook yourself. I mean, the stuff that they put in there is just crazy, you know, and you can control a lot of your fat and your grease by you know, trimming off the meat or using a teaspoon of oil instead of, you know, a cup of oil. I mean, there's, there's just so many little ticks, tips and tricks for cooking healthier versus when you eat out, it's just, you just consume so many more calories when you eat out. Yeah. So. I mean, not to mention the unknown amounts of fat, sugar right. Right. And, and salt. I mean, you have no idea what's going into your food. Right, when exactly. you eat out, uh, you are, you lose control of what is, what you're eating. You really do. Yeah. yeah. No so when you're, even if you're, even if you're vegetarian or vegan, you don't know for sure that that meal is really that. I mean, you just, you're not the one making it. So you don't know. Yeah. So cooking at home definitely puts you totally in control yes, of, exactly. of what's going into your body. I totally, I agree with that. You know, now we're going into a new season. We're going into the fall, which I love. I always love a new season. It kind of like, you know, gets <laughs> new new ideas for recipes and stuff. So what are some of your favorite recipes? So for fall, right now? well, actually my latest one I'm really excited about, it's the air fried cauliflower. And it's got like a chipotle kind of seasoning. I, I also do, I'm a sponsor for a com for a spice company, so it, it uses their seasoning. But you could use your own homemade chipotle seasoning, or I have a chipotle seasoning recipe on there. That one's one of my favorites. But one of my really good favorites, and I haven't made it in a while. I'm going to make it this week. Is chicken sausage. And basically, you take chicken and then you grind it up in your food processor and you add the spices and you let it sit overnight. And then the next day, I, what I do is I'll freeze it. Um, like raw like that, or sometimes I'll go ahead and cook it and freeze it that way. It just depends. But what I love to do is take, um, you know, spaghetti squash or acorn squash, any of the squashes. Um, and so I will cut those in half, scoop out all the pulp and everything. And I can do all this in my toaster oven. It's great. 
And then I'll bake, I'll spray it with a little bit of olive oil and then I'll bake it um, for about 20 minutes or so till it's soft, flip it over. And then I'll have taken that chicken sausage and I'll have fried it up with a bunch of veggies. And I just throw it all in that little um, squash as a little bowl. And then that's one of my very favorite things to eat for fall. And just, I don't know, I just love that. So that sounds yeah. delicious. I know <laughs> as I have on my counter, my kitchen counter, I have about I think it's like 200 tomatoes just for my garden. They're like yes. the last of the tomato. They're just holding on. I'm like, all right, I'm done with tomatoes. I want, I'm ready for a winter squash. And so yes, your recipe yes. sounds sounds really good. And I, it sounds like I need to get an air fryer. I think I'm the last person on the planet who has one. Well, you know, you know what? I um, I should be a sponsor for them because I talk about them so much. But um, the one I like because I don't. While I love cooking gadgets and all that, I get tired of having all little, you know, you just get so many. So I have a Breville smart oven air and it does, it's a fryer too. It's an air fryer as well. And so it's a toaster oven, air fryer, it does all that. So I do keep that on my counter and you can make big batches, which is what I like. Like I can do that whole batch of cauliflower in one fell swoop, you know, 15 minutes it's done. So I do, I do like that kind of thing for sure. Okay. So. Good to know. Yeah. That's but back all. on I'm your tomatoes, at... I just thought of something. Do you have an Instapot? I don't have an Instapot either. I, you know what? I hey. think I, I am one of the like old school, you know, I'm an empty nester now. And so like, I'm, yeah. I'm hesitant to add in more equipment that I might not use. You know, I, I lived my whole life without these, yeah. these pieces well, let me of tell equipment. You, I, I'm a, I'm a, like, I wanted to slow cook all day on the stove and I'm that kind of person. But I have fallen in love with Instapot because it just goes so fast. And here's a great recipe for um, tomatoes. So you take all those homegrown tomatoes and you throw them in a pot and you throw like some onions. I've got all, I, it's all on my website. It's Instapot um, homemade tomato sauce. You don't peel them. You don't core them. You don't, you, you don't take the stems off, obviously. But you throw them all in there and then you basically um, uh, do the uh, pressure, pressure cook it. And I think, I can't remember, I haven't made it for a little bit, but it's like 30 minutes. And seriously, you've got homemade tomato sauce in no time flat. And all you do is throw everything in the pot. So it's one of those things you should think about. So You keep the skins on the tomatoes yeah, and everything? Yeah, I keep them all on there. And oh, I, know, okay. I know that goes against a lot of people. You know, I'm a, I'm a home cook anyway. I'm not a, I'm not a, you know, a chef, but, um, but man, and I, that was my top recipe for so many years. And I still get comments about how easy it is and how great it tastes and it was no, you know, you just basically throw it all in there. So, and, and pressure cook it. So okay. the, I don't use the Instapot for really anything else other than pressure cooking. Um, and also there's a saute button. So like I'll saute the onions in the, in the um, bottom of the, the pot first, then I'll add the tomatoes and everything. And then, and then you just pressure cook it all. And I mean, it's okay. super for stews great to and know. Sauce. Yep. So yeah, last time I, I, my last batch of tomatoes, I was dunking them in the boiling water, taking off right. the skins, you know, the right. whole, it's, it's good. very I mean, time it's consuming. A, it's a better sauce, obviously, but this one is really good and you didn't do all that work. And so, yeah. You know, okay. Way to save those wonderful tomatoes this time of year for sure. Yeah. No, great to know. Okay. Thank you for sharing that recipe. <laughs> I'll look it up on your website. So <laughs> tell me, um, you mentioned before that you have your membership and you are about to relaunch. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. So my yeah, membership only that. opens a few times a year and it's going to be opening up soon. But before that, I'm doing a, um, a five day food prep um, boot camp and that's going to be starting on October 2nd. And I'll send you the link so you can give it to everybody. But um, basically you just sign up for the boot camp, and you, there's going to be a little homework. You know, you don't have to do it in the manner at the, at the time that I want you to do it, but it's better if you do. And it's just to get you in the habit of, of doing a little food prep and see how, how it's going to work for you and how easy it can be. And, and then if you like, you know, if you like my method and everything, then you're welcome to join my membership because we, we have a lot of fun in there. That's for sure. So we're always swapping recipes and, and, uh, pictures and it, it's just, it's really fun. So yeah, it's a great group. Sounds great. Um, that sounds like a, a good start to the fall. I know that this time of year, it's just everyone's yes. sort of like, you know, done with summer. We want to get back into, yes, you know, it's getting healthy for sure. And it's know. comfort food season for sure. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's great. Well, Amy, thank you so much for just coming on today and talking food with me. Cause I love talking food. 
And your meal planning method sounds really great. And we both know how important meal planning and food prep is to healthy eating and just healthy living, right? Yes. So we um, can be just in control of what we're eating. And yes. also, you know, if you're concerned about just food waste and, the, you know, this is definitely food meal planning is definitely and food prepping is the best way to to um, save on food waste. It really is. Do I have time for one quick little story? Sure. My my son. So he he's 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 working quite a bit these days and he's trying to save money because he wants to move out at some point. And so this morning he comes in and he's like, mom, what do we, what do we have? I could take for lunch. And so I go in there and I, he, he, we made bison burgers the other day. And so anyway, they were in the freezer. So he pulled some of those out and he, he threw in a handful of tomatoes and some Hawaiian rolls. And that's what he's going to have for lunch. And he's like, mom, it's just so stupid to eat out. He's like, everybody's spending $12 a day. They go to that fancy um, convenience store and they buy their big old drinks and then they get this crappy food. And he's like, mom, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to steal what we have out of the freezer. <laughs> and so anyway, it cracks me up. He's 23. So it's just, uh, it's just neat when you see people, you know, adopting your, your method and stuff. So, yeah, well, he's lucky to have you as a mom, you know, who has been in, you know, you, he can see you in the habit of. Yeah, and he does and it too. I mean, like he'll 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 make up hamburgers and and then and he'll like we better freeze these. I'm like, yes, we better. So yeah, yeah. No, it's it's also it's been my mission in life too to have my three kids who are now living on their own and uh -huh. working and everything, and you know just to have them get into that habit of right. of meal planning and and so because it saves them money it saves them time and, and, and i love it how he hates he hates fast food he's like who wants to go to fast food mom that stuff's gross and it's just it, it just melts my heart when he says that yeah no it does i know it makes your heart like just feel good <laughs> <laughs> so i understand that totally well amy thank you so much this has been a great conversation well, Sure. And good luck with your next round of your membership and you. keep creating and cooking delicious recipes. Thank you. I will. And thank you so much again for having me on. This has been wonderful. So I appreciate it. Sure. That. Great. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. And as always, if you loved this podcast, please consider gifting me with a five-star review. It is so helpful for me to get the word out on real eating, our real bodies, and real food stories. Thank you so much and have a great week. Bye for now.